So our new unit is on geometry, and it just begins with some of the basics that you're going to see throughout. So uh, a bit of what we're going to do today is define some terms, and we're going to uh, we're just going to do some basic things to get used to some of the terminology of geometry. So here we, so here we go. Start off with the discipline of geometry, just so that you have something to write down. The discipline of geometry was formed out of the need to measure for somehow I wasn't able to, to write, was formed out of the need. I don't need to, we don't need to need. The need to measure for construction, for navigation, and astronomy. So geometry is actually one of the oldest forms of mathematics. People groups for thousands of years have been using geometry. What they might not have done is been able to write down the principles and things like that and maybe symbolize it, but they were definitely able to use it. I mean, if you look at things like the Egyptian pyramids and some of the other construction things that are still remain around the world from, from civilizations long gone, uh, they definitely knew how to use geometry in an amazing, uh, amazing way. So some of our basic terms, the most basic object in geometry is what's called a point. A point is not formally defined, but it is conceived as a location in space with no length, no width, or no height. Okay? A point has no volume, a point has no area, a point has no, uh, no length. It is just a location uh, somewhere in space. So that is the most, uh, that is the most basic geometric uh, object and everything else in geometry is built up from there. And so we get to what's called a line. We've used the word line. We, we know by seeing it what a line is, but to define a line, we would say a line is a set of points And any two distinct points determine a unique line. So the thing about a line is a line extends forever in both directions. Once you've connected your two distinct points, the line goes and goes and goes and goes. So some things that are uh, components of a line or things like what's called a line segment. A line segment is the part of the line between two points. And also notice this is very important for a line segment. It includes the endpoints. Okay. So it's all the points between two points. It's the part of the line between two points. And for a line segment, you include the endpoints. Another commonly used geometric uh, form is called a ray. And a ray is what is a half line that includes the endpoint. So I'm going to show you some of the ways that we notate these things so that you're able to uh, so you're able to, uh, to to use them. Also, let me just draw a quick picture. A line is the set uh, is a set of points, and any two points determines a unique line. So a line, the way we would notate it, it goes like this, where the arrows on the ends indicate that the line goes forever in each direction. A line segment is just the it's just the points between it's the part of the line between two points and to indicate that we've included the ends we just kind of make a little bit of a a filled in dot on each side that would give us a line segment and then a ray is like a ray of sunshine it starts at a particular point so we include the point and then goes in just one direction that's what makes something a ray versus something being a point.
So now if you want to notate these things, the symbols that we use for them as we communicate and use this language of geometry, if I want to say to you, I am at point A, the way that I will do it and the way our book does it is you put a little dot and then the letter A. That represents point A. You want to declare to somebody that you're talking about the line that goes through as defined by points A and B, whatever other points are on the line, it's defined by points A and B. You would do this. You'd write A and B. Those are the, the two points determining the distinct line. And then you'd put the symbol for a line up top. So you'd put the arrows on the end. And so that is telling you, that's communicating that it's a line because I see the line up on the top and it's the line defined by points A and B. Ray AB. So what we're talking about here is the ray that starts at point A and goes in the direction of B. So what I would do is I would take AB and then I'm going to put the ray in the direction. So the starting point is at A. So I put the starting point at A and then the arrow goes over B. Which would be completely different than if I wanted the ray, if I wanted to communicate the ray starts at B and goes in the direction of A, I can do one of two things for this. I can either put the, I could put the letters like this, B, A, and then do the arrow. Or if I really love alphabetical order and I wanted to keep my letters in alphabetical order, there's no need to do that. To indicate that you're starting at B and moving in the direction of A, you would just do the arrow backwards. You could do either of those two things. They're both equivalent. They don't matter. But make sure that you understand the notation here, that when you're reading a ray, there is a definitive starting point, and then the other point determines the direction the ray is going in. So A, B with the arrow going from A to B is different than B, A with the arrow going from B to A. Those are completely different things. Okay, so a line segment, remember the line segments defined as the part of the line between two points, including the endpoints. So I would write A, B, and then I would just write a line segment over. You don't need to put any dots or anything like that. That's not really done. Uh, you just It's assumed that it's a line segment if you just put the line o over there. Now, what's called an open line segment, if you want to indicate that it's just the uh, it's just the part of the line between two points, but then not including the endpoints, Then what you would do is you'd write the A and the B again, and then you do your little line, but then tell people so that people would know that you're not including the endpoints, you would put an open bubble on each side to indicate that the endpoints are not part of the part of the answer. And then finally, the last thing you might see as you're going through your homework, I've just I've just done the symbols for the really common things uh, that you that you encounter most often is a half open segment A B, and so. I didn't define which part is the half open, so I'll just show you. Uh, if if at point A is the part not included, you'd put an open circle there, and then B would be included. Okay, that's why it's called half open. Or if B was the one not included, you would write it like this, A, B, and then you'd put the open circle over B. Okay, so the symbolism hopefully is pretty uh, is pretty straightforward. You're just putting the open uh, open circle with the end that's not included. Okay, so those are the common uh, the common things that you'll see. That's what we're gonna we're gonna kind of play around with here for the rest of our sec uh, section as we do things with it. So here's an example just to kind of play around with these things and get a little familiar because I know you probably haven't done a whole lot of geometry in the last couple months. So I, I don't wanna I don't wanna assume anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use line AD. So I've I've chosen the points A and D to define this line. By the way, you might say, hey. Perkster, does it matter? Could I have used another pair of points? Would it be a different line? And the answer is no. If instead of AD, if you had written, let's say, BC, that would be the same line because all of those points are on this line. You could have had point, uh, line BD, same line. Okay, so you're just picking any two points on that line to determine it. Okay, so I don't want you to think that AD is different than BC or BD when you're talking about a line. 
So here's what we're going to do. We're going to think back to some of our things that we did in our first unit when we talked about sets, and we're just going to kind of make a few problems here. So my problem A in this example, and I'm going to do these ones, and then when we turn the page, there is a very similar problem for you to do uh, 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 as an exercise. So here I've got A, B with a line segment notation over it. And I've got AD with a line segment notation over it. Remind me, just because it's been a long time since we've done this, what does this symbol mean between them? Union. And what does union say to do with, with two things? You join them. Okay, you're taking all the elements of each set and you're joining them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little blue pen here and we're going to see what happens when I glue these things together with my union. So AB is the line segment from A to B. It includes the endpoints. So I'm going to draw it in blue right here. It starts at A and it goes to B. It includes the endpoints. So there we go. And AD is the segment that starts at A. So I'm going to just draw this right under, starts at A, and now goes all the way over to D. Okay. Great. So when I union those two things, when I smush them together, what is my result? What does this equal when I, when I look at my picture, when I, when I combine those sets of points? Where does the union start? Yep. And then where does the union end? D, yes. And there's overlap here, but that's all right. If you remember when we talked about sets, when things were in both sets, we just wrote them once, right? That didn't really affect my, my union at all. So the result here, when I when I take AB, that line segment, now union AD, since there, since AB is fully contained with a, within AD, the result is just the segment AD. These first couple problems are just to remind you of what the symbols are. That they'll get a little bit more interesting, but what you're going to see is there's not a whole lot of fun we can have with a line. There's only so many questions you can ask. Okay, so the next one is I'm going to take that segment AB again that I've already drawn, and I'm going to take the segment AD that I've already drawn, but this time, what does this symbol between them mean? This is the intersection. What does the intersection, what does the intersection mean? How do I find that? Perfect. Said perfectly. It is exactly what they have in common. That is right. So looking at these two blue drawings that I have, when I look and ask this question, what do they have in common? What, where do they start having things in common? At A right there, we see both have A. Okay, great. Where do they stop having things in common? B. Right. So when I take these two segments and I intersect them, meaning what do they have in common? I see that they have the segment, uh, they have the segment AB. We doing all right so far? Again, these first couple problems are just to remind us what union and what intersection is. I've got one more problem. This one's a little more interesting than the other two. So I'm going to change colors for this one. So now I've got segment BC. Okay. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to union it with Ray the ray that starts at C and goes in the direction of D. We're, so we're unioning, we're gluing together, just like we saw a moment ago. So here we go. I'm going to start with segment BC. So I'm going to start at B, and then I'm going to go to C. Remember, a segment has a definitive start and stop place. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to union that. So as I'm looking at this picture, remember we're gluing these two things together. I'm unioning that with CD, the ray that starts at C and goes in the direction of D. So I'm just going to draw this under here just to keep them a little separate. I'm going to I'm going to start at C and I'm going to go in the direction of D. And remember, a ray never stops. Once it gets started, it never stops. So again, I'm talking about the union here. I'm gluing these two things together. The union means to join them together. So when I take this and I smush these two figures together, this segment and this ray, the result, where does the result start? At B. And then what happens as I keep going? Does it ever stop when I go to the right? Do I ever have a gap? No, because... 
These both have C included, so there's no gap at all. So I just keep going in that direction. Now you have a choice. If this was your problem on a test, you would have a choice. All you have to tell me with array is what direction it's going in. Okay, it doesn't matter what point you pick as long as they're going in the same direction. I would just because I don't know why my brain works this way. It's not right or it's not wrong. I'm just going to say I would write B, D, and there we go. But you might say, hey, Perkster, I would have said it starts at B and it goes in the direction of C. That would be fine, too. But what is non-negotiable about array is what the starting point is. Okay? You can't pick A as the starting point, or you can't pick C or D as the starting point. It has to be B is the starting point. Am I making any sort of sense here? Okay, I just want to get into geometry slowly because I know we're, we're shifting gears from the previous unit to this one, and I, I just want to make sure that I'm doing a, a good, thorough job making you feel comfortable. Okay, so let's flip the page, top of page two. It is essentially the same sort of problem, just three new examples. I'm going to give you uh, a, a 90 seconds, maybe two minutes to do this. So do the A, the B. Uh, actually, let's do them one at a time. Forget that. I'm going to give you one minute. Do the A part to this. We've got ray BC, and we're intersecting that with ray DB. Okay, so let's see how you did. Remember, always ask me any questions that you have. Let's make sure we're clear as we're as we're leaving here today and you're going to go away into your weekend. You're going to do your homework. So I've got Ray BC. So that's the Ray that starts at B and goes in the direction of C. So it's going to go this way forever. Then I've got Ray DB. So that's the Ray that starts at D. And then this one goes in the direction of B. So this one's going backwards on my line right here. Before we talk about the intersection, any issue with drawing those two things and understanding how, where they came from? We're doing all right. So this time we're intersecting. So again, like the last problem we intersected, we're looking at what they have in common. So looking at those two rays, where do they start having things in common? At B? Yes, right here at B is where I see both purple, uh, both purple parts, so at B. And then as I continue looking down my figure, where do they stop having things in common? At D, that's true. And what do we call it? What kind of figure, turn back to the first page if you need to, what kind of figure has a starting and a stopping point? Yep, perfect, line segment. Say it with authority, shout it out. Yes, it's the line segment, BD. All right, we'll try the next one. Okay, we're getting we're getting used to doing this. We're practicing. Do the next one. It says BD that ray union DB. So this time it's the same two it's the same two rays, but this time we are unioning them, meaning joining everything together.
All right, so I've got the same two rays, the same two purple figures right here. I'm not going to redraw on this one. The only difference this time is instead of intersecting, which I did on the, the part A of this problem, we're going to union. Union means to join them. So as I'm looking at this, as I'm joining everything together, what kind of figure results? Or tell me, where does it, where does it start? Or, or describe for me what's happening. Yeah, there's no end point, right? Because it keeps going forever this way and forever that way, right? Does that does that seem reasonable? Are there any gaps in here that I have to account for? No. So what kind of figure, again, look on the front page if you need to, what kind of figure keeps going in both directions? We call that a what? It's, a, it's not a line segment. Line segments have a start and a stopping point. It's just a regular old line when it goes in both directions. So the way I'm going to answer this question for the union is this. Now, remember, you have full options. Okay, uh, I think on my math lab, this type of problem would be multiple choice because it would be too many options for the people who programmed my math lab to put all the different ones in. But remember, a line is defined by two points. So you can pick any pair of points here for your line. So I, again, I don't know why my brain works this way. I tend to pick the ones that are furthest apart. I would pick A and D and put my line over it, and that would be the answer. But whatever pair of points, I'm just going to pick a couple other pairs. This is not an exhaustive list. But if you had, had done B, C and said that's the line. That is a perfectly wonderful answer. If you had said uh, line CA, if they don't have to be in alphabetical order, there's no there's no reason that that would be. So you could say CA. As long as you pick two points on the line and put that line symbol up above, you have answered the question correctly. We doing all right? All right, last one, do the C part. This time we've got two line segments that we are unioning together. A ray has a starting point, one starting point, and it goes forever in the other direction. Okay, so when we drew this figure, we had this top ray starts at the point B and goes forever in that direction, never stops. That's why I draw an arrow there. And then the other ray starts at D and goes forever in this direction. Again, never stops. That's why I got an arrow. And so now when I when I do the union, when I take all the points in both of these figures, both of these rays, I see what I end up with is something that goes forever to the left and goes forever to the right, and there's no gaps. So that makes it a line. And that's why we picked that instead of a segment. When we intersected, when we said, what do they have in common? Okay, well, they definitely have in common these two places where they overlap. There's a starting point. There's a stopping point. That's why that's why that was a line segment as the answer. Okay, great, great question. Okay, so on this one, I'm taking segment AC. I'm going to do this one in, in blue. So segment AC, so I have a starting and a stopping point. So I'm going to start at A in blue, and I'm going to go out to C in blue. And there's my, there's my line segment AC. We're going to union, which means join together, this time with segment BD. So the segment that starts at B and goes to D, I'm going to do this below to keep them uh, to keep them distinct. So it goes from B to D, and there's my segment. Can you see that all right on the picture? Is there any confusion there about those two blue segments? I think, that, I think you can see them okay. So A to C is right here. B to D, again, I am unioning them. I am not intersecting them. Union means join together. So when I consider both of these and I take everything that I see, where do I start? At A, where do I stop? 
D, okay, has to be the points A and D because a segment has a particular starting and a stopping point, and I put my segment over that. What if this was an intersection problem? Just before we move on, since we've drawn the picture, let's just say, what if this was AC intersect BD? Yeah, what they have in common starts at B and ends at C. Perfect. Great job. Since, since we'd already done it, might as well just go ahead and get all the value I can out of those problems. Okay, well, as you can see, there's really, I mean, I could ask some other questions, but they don't really get any more interesting. When you only have got, we only got one dimension there. It's it's hard to it's hard to ask a lot of interesting problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to level up here, and we're going to now say, okay, a plane. A plane is a two dimensional surface that extends infinitely in both directions. Now, now I have two dimensions but has no thickness. So for instance, the surface of the whiteboard at the front of the room, that is a portion of a plane. If you can envision this whiteboard going forever, up and down would be one direction, that's one dimension, and then left and right would be the other dimension, that would be what a plane is, it goes forever, okay? So a plane is a two-dimensional surface that extends infinitely in both directions. If you're watching this on video, the same could be said for your computer screen. It is a portion of a plane. And if you had enough money and had an infinite computer screen, that would probably be pretty cool. So then any, just like a line is de determined by any two points, a plane is determined by any three points, any three distinct points not on the same line determine a plane. So for instance, if you're somebody who likes to take pictures, you might have a tripod, right? And you put your camera on the tripod and you might have wondered to yourself, why does a tripod have three legs? Wouldn't more legs be better? Well, the reason it has three legs is you can put a tripod on any surface, whether it's level or whether you're on the side of a rocky mountain. And because there's three points at the bottom of the tripod, it will always be able to form a stable, uh, a, a stable, uh, a stable place for your camera. That's why a tripod has three legs instead of four or five or six. If you've ever been to somewhere that has bar stools and you're sitting on it and they have four legs, you can always tell if it's not level, right? Because what happens when you sit on the stool? You start, uh-oh, I'm rocking, right? Because what you're doing is you're rocking between two different planes for that bar stool. When you're in the, when you when you're right here, you're you're on the whatever three legs are on that plane, and then you rock to the left and you're on the three legs that determine that plane. So any three distinct points that are not on the same line determine a unique plane. And my example to you was a tripod is is an example of of one of uh, of using three points to create a plane two lines in the same plane okay so again i'm not i'm not in space i'm still two dimensions two lines in the same place that do not intersect are called parallel lines parallel lines never cross they never touch each other they never get closer together and then the final thing in a plane, the final figure that we're going to talk about and we're going to play around with, and it, it gives us the opportunity to you to do some more interesting questions. An angle is created from the union of two rays with a common endpoint. So if you have two rays that both start at the same endpoint, then you have what's called an angle. That endpoint that the rays share is called the vertex of the angle. And you're going to see a bunch of angles as we go through, so you're you'll get the you'll get the feel for them. The symbol for angle ABC, you use a little angle symbol like this, and then you do ABC. And when you use three letters to define an angle, the middle one has to be the vertex. A and C are points on the other rays that, that help you see the, the size of the angle. And I'll show you that. I'm going to show you that in just a minute.
Okay, so exercise two. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the first problem, and then I'm gonna give you opportunity to work each of the successive problems here. So in exercise two, we're gonna use this figure. We've got three lines that that all cross each other. So we, I've labeled lots of points, or the the drawing that I picked has labeled lots of points. So we're gonna use that figure to determine the set represented in each problem. So part A, the one that I'm going to do, says this. I've got angle F. C, D. Okay, so we're all going to find F, C, D. It's going to be the angle uh, defined by points F and D, and then C should be the vertex. So I'm going to trace over that. So here are those points. Here's F right here. Here is C. That's got to be the vertex. And here's D. So I'm going to trace these in orange. Okay, so F to C to D is this angle right here, and it goes forever in those directions. Remember, because it's two rays that are leaving point C. That's what makes that an angle. You tracking with me? Are we okay? I know this is new stuff. I'm, I'm assuming it's new stuff. Maybe you've seen it before. That's even better for you, but we're, uh, I'm assuming it's new. Okay, so FCD is that angle right there. Now we're gonna intersect that. Remember what it has in common with angle HCD, okay? So I'm gonna trace over HCD. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's the point H. Since the point C is in the middle, it's the vertex and D. I'm just gonna to try to draw this one a little bit separate so that we can see what they have, what's going on. So there's the one ray and here's the other ray going in this direction right here. And that is angle HCD. Can you see that all right? Are you tracking with me on what's going on there? Let me know. Interact with me. Uh, I, I always want this to be the best possible experience it can be for you. Okay, so if I'm intersecting those two things, what they have in common, here's angle FCD right here. Here's angle, uh, here's angle HCD right there. What do those two things have in common? Okay, it starts at C, I'll agree with you there. And then what happens? And it goes in the direction of D, does it stop at D? No, okay, so C is the starting point. It goes in direction of D because you can see both of those rays. So what do I have? I kind of just gave it away. What is the resulting figure called? A ray, yes, it's the ray that starts at C and goes in the direction of D. That's what these two angles have in common when I overlap them. This stuff out here doesn't affect the intersection. This stuff out here doesn't affect the intersection. The only thing that affects the intersection is this stuff right here that they have in common. All right, we'll try the next one. In part B, I give you ray Fi, and you're going to union it with ray Fg. All right, so here we go. Let's try this out. Ray Fi starts at F and goes in the direction of I. I'm going to actually draw this a little closer, but it looks like this, drawing it in green right there. Okay, so that's Ray Fi. Would everybody agree with that? Okay, and then I've got Ray Fg. That's the ray that starts at F and goes in the direction of G. So that's this ray right here. So I have two rays that start from a common point. What is the resulting figure called? An angle. So I'm going to write an angle right here. That's my angle symbol. 
And then what's that angle going to be called? It's either going to be I and then F and then G. Okay, so you've gone I, F is the vertex. It has to be the letter in the middle, G. Or it doesn't matter. Or you could have said G, F, I. Okay, the order of the letters doesn't matter. The only thing that matters for an angle is the vertex has to be the one in the middle. And that's that you have no choice about. All right, try the next one. Ray AC intersected with Ray EF. So ray AC starts at A and goes in the direction of C. So it looks like this right here. So I'm going to draw a nice pink line in that direction. So this problem is in pink. Let me put the pink equal sign to remind us. And then ray EF starts at E and goes in the direction of F like this right here, that pink ray. And I know I drew them off of the figure a little bit, so hopefully that doesn't cause confusion. We're intersecting, so where do they intersect? At just the point B, right? They overlap right there, and then they go in their separate directions. So from the first page, if you remember, here's how I represent point B, is I'm going to put a point, and then I'm going to put B like that. So last problem Probably should have redrawn the figure for you because it's kind of getting all uh, gummed up here, but that's okay. We can make do with this. Last one, I've got two angles that we're intersecting this time. Ooh, got a little spider running across the screen. Hello, little spider. All right, so I've got two angles. I'm gonna, I found a highlighter here. So hopefully this will help the, uh, this uh, appear more clear. So I've got angle A, B, E. So that has the, that's the angle with B is the vertex and goes in the direction of A and E. So that is this angle right here. I'm gonna put some arrows on the end of that right there. So that's that angle that I've highlighted. Can you see that all right on the screen? Yeah, it looks like, looks like we can. All right, and then I've got F, B, C, so that goes from F to B. Again, that's the vertex to C. So that is this angle right here. So when I've drawn those two highlighted angles, where do they intersect once again? Again, just they come and they touch each other at point B and then they go in their separate directions. So I'll write point B as that right there. Are we doing okay? All right, well, I'm going to flip the page. We're going to keep talking about angles. Okay. So a little bit of terminology. This will be relevant because when we come back next time, one of the sections we're going to do deals with triangles. Okay, so we're going to have figures that tri means three, figures that have three angles. And so uh, one of the ways we label triangles is 
by their angles. So we'll get to recycle this information. There are four types of angles that you're going to encounter. The first type of angles are called acute angles. And acute angles have measurements. I'm going to use the letter X for the measurement of the angle. The, the acute angles have measurements that are greater than zero, so they actually exist, and they're less than 90. Now, a 90-degree angle, in case you've uh, forgotten any geometry you've ever learned before, a 90-degree angle is like the wall and the floor should be Otherwise, you should leave the building. They should be at a 90 degree angle. Okay, that's what 90 degrees is. Okay. So 90 degrees, wall, floor, join at, it's called, it's uh, a 90 degree angles. And we'll learn this in a minute. It's called a right angle. But an acute angle is from zero to 90. So the next one is I've already spoiled the surprise is called a right angle. And a right angle is a strictly 90 degree angle. The next type of angle is called an obtuse angle. And an obtuse angle is bigger than 90, but it's less than 180 degrees. And then finally, the fourth type of angle is called a straight angle. And it is strictly the two rays are 180 degrees apart. I'm going to put in parentheses, that is also just a line. Straight angle is just another way to refer to a line. Okay, both of those are equivalent. Two angles are called complementary. They're called complementary angles if their sum of the measures is 90 degrees. So if you have two angles, and if you add up the measures of two angles, and it turns out to be 90 degrees, what you have is what's called two complementary angles. And then we have this, a similar term for if two angles add up to 180 degrees, they are called supplementary. So for most of the rest of our time here, we're just going to have a little fun with complementary and supplementary angles and the measures of different angles. And that's going to kind of take us to the finish line of this first section of our, our geometry unit. So here's my example right here. Example two, in the figure to the right, angle DBC, so angle D right here, and then B is the vertex, and then C going out here in the middle, and ABC, so A is down here, and B, and then C is that same, uh, that on that same, uh, same ray, so DBC and ABC are complementary, okay, complementary, remember, means they add up to 90 degrees, so I'm just going to make that little note so I don't forget. So for this first problem, we're going to make this nice and uh, nice and concrete. If the measure of A, B, C is 34 degrees. So A, B, C, here's, uh, I don't know how much the book uses this, so this may or may not be extra knowledge. If you want to, on the picture, notate the size of an angle, what you do is you draw a little arc in it like this. And then I'm going to say that that is 34 degrees right there. So I'm just going to make a little arc at 34 degrees, that way... Anyone who's looking at the picture knows exactly what you are referring to right there. So if ABC is 34 degrees, find the measure of DBC. So DBC, this one right here, I'm going to draw another arc, and then I'm just going to put a question mark right there. That is what we're looking for. Now, I understand. I, I understand we got calculators. I understand that it's kind of an intuitive problem, and you can come up with the answer without really writing any work at all. But just so that your notes are complete, and when you go back to read this later, I just want to feel good about my presentation today. So here's what I'm going to do. These two things are complementary. What that means is the question mark angle, the one that I don't know, plus the 34 degree angle have to add up to 90 degrees. So there's just an expression of what you intuitively know. And I know that's an equation, okay? You don't have to solve the equation. You can just tell me, what am I going to do here in order to figure out the measure of the angle I don't know? 
-hmm. Yeah, and you probably saw that already, right? Just from the picture that you're going to take the 90 degrees of the whole angle and you're going to subtract the 34 to see what's left over. And by the way, that's also how you solve the equation. So if you remember any basic algebra, this is the most advanced algebra you're going to need in this class. Okay, that's the... Uh, so that's not one of the things that, that you have to worry about. And so what that means is my question mark is equal to just what you told me. 90 minus 34 is 56 degrees. You track it with me? We're doing okay? Am I going too fast? All right, well, then what I would like you to do right below that is exercise three. I'm going to give you 90 seconds or so. It's the same sort of thing, except this time the two angles in the figure are supplementary. So in this one, exercise three, it says that angle DBA, so the smaller angle right here, and angle ABC, the larger of the two angles, those two things are supplementary. And again, I'm just going to write down supplementary means they add up to 180 degrees. I'll be honest with you, I, I sometimes... Have, have trouble remembering which one's which, the best thing my brain has been able to, to determine. And if you have a better way, let me know. Complementary comes before supplementary alphabetically. So 90 comes before 180 in the numbers. That's the best way that I can remember, but sometimes I still, I still get them all mixed up. So this time the measure of ABC is 115 degrees. So here's my arc. That's going to be 115 degrees. I want to know what is DBA. I'm going to put a little question mark right there. So again, another concrete problem. You can probably do this uh, with your calculator. I'm going to show you the work because you're going to need the work for the next problem. That's a little less concrete. Okay. So I've got the angle that I don't know plus the 115 is equal to the 180. And that tells you, in addition to just looking at the picture, that tells you what are you going to do with the numbers in order to get the result. Yes, perfect. We are going to subtract. Lovely. And so what we get is that the angle that I don't know, angle uh, angle DBA, is equal to 180 minus 115. And so that is 65 degrees. Okay, so the next problem, exercise four, uses the same picture, but this time instead of one of the angles being declared, both of them are defined as in relation to each other. So uh, give it a try. Uh, if you don't get this one, that's okay. You're going to get another. Uh, you're going to get another attempt on your next exercise.
right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this problem. Uh, again, if, if you struggle to know what to do with the with the, what's going on, that's okay. We're learning. So you're going to get another shot in just a minute to do the same sort of thing. So in this figure, uh, this time in figure in exercise three, the one that we just did, angle DBA and ABC are supplementary. Same as before. That first line is no different. But this time, instead of telling you the exact measure of an angle, I've said, okay, if ABC is X, I don't know what it is, and DBA is whatever X is minus 30, what is the value of X? So I'm going to go up and I'm going to label my picture to try to, try to help. So ABC is X. So I'm going to use orange this time because orange and blue, best combination of colors ever. If you know, you know. There we go. So we've got X. So ABC is X. I've put an orange X there. Are you with me so far? And then DBA, the other angle, is whatever X is minus 30. So I'm going to come over here and say, okay, X minus 30. So then the way I attack this problem is like this. I say, okay, I was told these two angles are supplementary. Supplementary means they add up to 180. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, okay, the first angle, the small angle is X minus 30. When I add it to the next angle, which is just X, the result, that's the first angle, x minus 30. That's the second angle, that's x. The result is 180. Now, before I work out the problem, okay, that's the setup. Is the setup pretty straightforward? Does everyone see where I got that from? Any mistakes that you made would feel okay now? Okay, so now the rest of this, again, this is the, you're, you're not expected to solve anything harder than this, okay, in this class. But remind me, I'm, I'm fairly certain at some point in your, in your high school life, you saw something like this. If I have an X here plus an X here, what do I have? I have two X. And then I have two steps. The first step is exactly what we did in the, the previous problems where I wrote out the work. The first thing is I'm, I'm going to get the 2x term by itself. So that means I've got to move this right here. How am I going to move this term where my pen is? What am I going to do? Yeah, I'm going to add to both sides. I'm going to add that 30. I just do the reverse. It's a minus 30 in the problem, so I add 30. And I've got a little bit of space over here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move up uh, so I have enough room. So now on the left side, when I have minus 30 plus 30, those two things cancel out. And so I just have 2x over on one side and then equals. And then 180 plus 30 is 210. And then finally, to figure out x, to answer the question where this one, we're just asked to find x, nothing more. What am I going to do to both sides of this to find out what x is? Yeah, you always do the reverse. This is two times X. So the reverse of two times X is to divide both sides by two. And I got X is equal to, and your calculator can tell you this part, 210 divided by two is gonna be 105. And that is the value of X. Nothing more to do on that problem. So far, so good? All right, well, if you understand how we did that problem, then the next example I do doesn't really offer any more other than you've just got to, you've got to write down the terms. So example three, and then you're going to do one just like example three right after it. So in example three, in the figure to the right, ABD, okay, this angle right here, and CBD, this angle right here, are supplementary. Again, same thing. They add up to 180, which you can clearly see from the picture. This time, though, instead of telling you how they're related, here's what I tell you. ABD, the bigger angle, is 66 greater than CBD. So now we're going to find the angles. Okay. So here's what I have to do. I am told this bigger angle that I'm tracing, this bigger angle, is 66 degrees greater than the other angle. So here's how I'm going to define my things. I'm going to define the other angle first. This one I'm going to call X. I don't know that one, but I am told in the problem, once I do know this one, how do I figure this one, the bigger one out? What do I do? You add 66. So this one's going to be whatever the other one is plus 66. So it just becomes the same problem that we did. You just had to do the interpretation of how they're related. So the rest of this, I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to speed like a gazelle through the rest of this. I've got my first angle X 
plus the second angle, X plus 66. That's equal to 180 because the two angles are supplementary. X plus X, that is two of them. I'm going to subtract the 66 from both sides of this one. I'm going to move to the left. I don't normally like to move to the left because we usually read left to right, but that's where my space is here. So the 66 minus the 66 leaves me 2x on the left. And then 180 minus 66 leaves me, I think that's 114, but you should definitely check that. Feeling a little goofy today. It's what? It's 114? Okay. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And then I get X is equal to, what's that, 57 degrees? Now, always make sure, again, in my math lab, it's usually fairly clear. Just make sure you're answering the question. The previous question, exercise four, said find X. We did that. This problem says, what's the measure of each angle? So we're asked for something a little different. So I'm just going to label my picture with the measure of each angle. X is 57. That means the smaller angle right here is 57 degrees. And then the other angle is x plus 66, so it's 57 plus 66, which is, I think, 123. All right, last problem on this page, then we've just got one more thing to take care of on the next page. So exercise five uses the same figure uh, and everything. I'm gonna redraw the figure so that uh, I don't, because I've already kind of messed up the other one. So go ahead and give it a try. Oh, yeah. Okay, so same sort of thing. In the figure from example three, the one that I just did, ABD and CBD are supplementary. So again, they add up to 180. This time I tell you the measure of ABD. So again, the measure of the big angle ABD is 88 greater than the other angle. So we're gonna find each. So once again, since I don't know, I'm, I'm told ABD is 88 greater than CBD. I don't know what CBD is, so I'm gonna call it X. That's that's first. And but what I when I do figure that out, the other one, the bigger angle is X plus 88. So now there's supplements. So that means X plus the second angle, X plus 88 equals 180. X plus X is 2X, as we've seen the other couple times we've done this. I'm going to subtract the 88. We always do the reverse. And 180 minus 88 is going to give me 92, I think. And then when I divide by 2 on both sides, I get x is equal to, what, 46? So once again, always make sure you're answering the question. The, you might be asked, what's the measure of the larger angle? I don't know, uh, but this one I just said, what's each? So that means the first angle, the smaller angle is 46. The second one is 46 plus 88. And your calculator will tell you, I think that that is 132 degrees. All right, before we turn the page, any questions, comments, concerns with what we're doing? All right, last little bit. We're almost there. 
So earlier, I defined for you uh, parallel lines. I told you parallel lines are two lines in a plane uh, that never meet. So in the figure that I have here, the two blue lines, which are labeled L1 and L2, those are parallel. They don't get any closer to each other. Uh, they don't meet. Uh, they're in the same plane. Uh, the way that you might see that notated in a problem is you might be told this, that L1, the symbol for parallel, either the, the problem will say L1 is parallel to, and it'll use words, but math people are lazy. They use symbols whenever they possibly can. And so the symbol for parallel is like an equal sign that's standing up. So if you see that symbol, that's telling you that L1 and L2 are parallel. That's just the lingo for it. And so the last little bit here is if you have a line, in this case, it's this purple line right here. If you have a line that cuts through two parallel lines, it is called a transversal. So a line that cuts through two parallel lines is called a transversal. And what this does is it sets up a bunch of angle relationships. And that's what's going to make this, uh, this problem of interest to us. So I'm going to define for you these, these angle relationships. And then you're going to finish up with some, uh, with some concrete numbers here on the last problem for the day. So angle one, okay, this angle right up here, okay, that, 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 that obtuse angle, angle one and angle four. Now, angle one and angle four, this is not particular to parallel lines, but I included it here as a good example. Notice angle one and angle four are directly across from each other. They share a vertex. Do you, do you see that? You understand that? Angle one and angle four, when you have angles of that relationship that share a vertex and are directly across from each other, they are called vertical angles. And they are equal angles. Okay. Let me write that down. I should have uh, I should have mentioned that. Angle 1 and angle 4 are vertical angles and I'm just going to write in parentheses right here, vertical angles are equal. We're going to take advantage of that fact in a minute. There are three other pairs of vertical angles underneath right here in this little bit of space. Just write one pair of vertical angles that you see in the figure. There are three other pairs of vertical angles. You just identify one. Somebody give me a pair of vertical angles. Okay, great. Angle two. And angle three, they are vertical angles. They are equal angles. Great. What's another pair that you see? Yep, angle six and angle seven are both vertical angles. And then there's one more that you could have written down. Perfect. Great job. Angle five and angle eight. Wonderful. Now, the next three pairs, and again, all of these angles are equal uh, in their relationships. I should have left a place uh, to mention that, but we'll see this in a minute. Angle one and angle five, these are defined by our parallel lines in the transversal. Angle one is uh, angle one is up here and angle five is right here. So I've put a, I've put a little arc on both so that we can see. Now here's the thing to notice. With respect to the two parallel lines, these two angles are in the same position. They're both top left, right? Does that make sense? When you have angles that are in the same position with respect to your parallel lines, they are called corresponding. I didn't leave enough room, but I hope you forgive me. They're called corresponding angles. Again, corresponding angles are equal. I'm not gonna write that down. I think it's pretty clear from the picture that, that they're equal. So do me a favor, there are three other pairs of corresponding angles. So write down just one or write down more if you have time, but just write down one other pair of corresponding angles.
All right, somebody give me another pair of corresponding angles. Yes, angle two and angle six. They are corresponding, they are equal. What's another pair of corresponding angles? Four and eight, yes, angle four and angle eight. They are corresponding. They are also equal angles, yes. Okay, what's another pair of corresponding angles? Okay, yep, the other pair is angle three and angle seven. Great job, excellent. All right. Again, with respect to the parallel lines, angle one, again, I'm gonna use blue this time, angle one and angle eight. Now here's what they are, here's their relationship. First thing, they are alternating. They're alternating because they're on opposite sides of the transversal. Angle one is on the left side of the transversal, angle eight's on the right side. They're alternating and they're also exterior angles. They're exterior angles because they are on the outsides of the parallel lines. So alternating refers to the transversal. Exterior refers to they're both on the outside of the lines. They are equal angles. You can always take that to the bank. Okay. So there is one other pair of alternating exterior angles. Go ahead and write that down. I'll give you 10 seconds. What's the other pair of alternating exterior angles? Yep, angle two and angle seven, great. All right, last but not least, I've got angles three and six. So angle three is right here, I'm using black this time. Angle three is there, angle six is right here. So help me out with this one. What do you, what do you hypothesize angle three and six might be called? What, what's, what's the first word most likely going to be? Alternating. Again, they're called alternating because they switch sides of the transversal. One is on the left side of the transversal. Six is on the right side of the transversal. But this time they're not alternating exterior. They're alternating what? Interior, they're on the inside. That's, that's exactly right. There's one other pair of alternating interior angles that are equal. Go ahead and write that down. And what's the other pair of alternating interior angles? Yep, angle four, whoops, angle four and angle five. All right, so here's the last thing you're gonna do for me and then you are done with me for the day. I would like you in exercise six, I am telling you that the measure of angle three is 25 degrees. I'd like you to fill in the rest of the figure, the other angles. You don't have to write this down, but I'd like you to think about why. How does the angle you're writing down the measure for uh, relate to another angle, okay? That's the practice here because that's what you're gonna be responsible for. So angle three is 25 degrees. I want you to fill in the rest of the angles. All right, so to finish up, somebody give me an angle and what it is, and then tell me why. And of course, for some of these, there's gonna be more than one reason you could give me. You don't need to give me all of them. So tell me an angle and tell me why. Okay, why is one 155 degrees? Okay, that's the word I was looking for, okay? So yes, three and one are supplementary angles. They form a straight line. 
And so if one, if three is 25, that means one has to be 155. Great. Somebody give me another angle and why? Okay, why? Perfect, vertical. Or, and I'm not gonna give you all the justifications for all of them, or you could have said one and two are supplements. Okay, there's gonna be more than one reason. Somebody give me another angle and what it measures and why. And why? Vertical, great. Somebody give me another angle and what it measures and why. Everybody's so shy. Yeah. Angle seven is what? 25, why is angle seven 25? That's great. There's like nine reasons you could give me. You almost can't be wrong. Perfect, angle three and seven are corresponding. That is, is, that is as good as any of the others. Then, because you all are so shy, you're really forcing it out of me today, okay? Then we could do the same thing down here. I mean, angle six is 25, and there's lots of justifications. You could say, oh, it's vertical with seven. It corresponds to two. It's alternating interior with three. There's multiple justifications for these things. Angle eight is 155 because it corresponds with four. Angle five is 155 because it's alternating interior with four. So... When on the test, because I'm going to do this, I'm going to give you a figure and I'm going to say, give me an angle and tell me why. That's that, There's multiple answers, but you have, you have to give me one just because we're setting up these relationships. All right. That is.